In case you ever find yourself in the wild in freezing temperatures without shelter, trash inside your pocket might save your life. That gum you've been carrying around for months has a foil wrapper, which is going to be your first tool to start a fire. The second tool you need is a battery. It must be in that flashlight you happen to have or some other gadget. You're going to need to cut a narrow bridge out of the wrapper. If it's any thinner, it might break without serving its purpose. One wrapper should be enough to make three igniters. Put on your gloves, this contraption is going to get really hot really soon. If you drop it, you'll lose your only source of fire. Attach the gum wrapper to the battery on both ends. Hold it next to some good flammable tinder. If you also have chapstick in your pocket, add some to the fire to make it burn longer. If you get stuck in the snow in your vehicle, kitty litter can come to the rescue. You'll need to shovel as much snow and ice as possible from where your tires pass and then put a good amount of cat litter around and under the tire. After you rock your car back and forth and carefully go from drive to reverse, you should get unstuck without a problem. In case you don't have a car or a tent at your disposal, you can arrange yourself a nice and warm sleeping area right in the snow. If you're stranded somewhere in the mountains, don't crash in a clearing. Avalanches are more likely to pass here. Find some accumulated debris and broken tree stumps at the base of the clearing and set camp there. To remove snow faster and easier, cut it with a knife or a sharp branch. You're going to be working with the crusty ice layer and going in blocks and not handfuls to save time and energy. Try clearing a section roughly as large as a king-size mattress. You won't be able to survive on ice-cold ground, so once you reach the soil, you'll need to thaw it. Pick enough wood to start a huge fire. You'll need it to burn for hours to keep you warm. If there are pine trees around you, you'll easily find fat wood. It's dried wood that's full of pine sap. You can start a fire on the tree stump using the method you already know. The resin will burn for days. It can also double as a signal fire for those looking for you. Don't feel like digging a shelter in the snow? Bullrush can help you out. It's hollow and it floats and can easily be shaped into whatever you need it to be. Snow bends it down and you can build your human nest inside it without any tools. Once you form the tunnel, bring some dry grass to insulate it. Get plenty of it to build strong and thick walls. Add more grass to the roof and don't forget to make a grass door and leave an opening to ventilate your shelter. Poke small holes in the ceiling and in the door. When you're about to leave the house for the wilderness in the winter, don't wear cotton clothes or socks. Cotton holds moisture like a champ and loses all of its insulating properties. So, if you sweat or get soaked from the snow, cotton will make you feel even colder. Put on several layers of synthetic clothes instead, with a waterproof outer layer. Long underwear can also count as a layer. Choose woolen socks because they will suspend the moisture in the weave. If you don't have any, you can put on regular socks and plastic bags on top of them. No matter how tempting it looks, don't eat ice or snow. It can give you dehydration, as your body will need more energy to heat up and melt snow than receive from consuming it. Put some snow or ice in a bottle and between your sweater and the upper layer of clothes. Your body heat will slowly but surely turn it into a liquid. To speed things up, put snow in a bucket or pot and thaw it above your fire. You can make some pine needle tea if you collect enough of those and drop them in freshly boiled water. This drink will be packed with vitamins and antioxidants, just what your immune system needs to survive. You can make a rope for binding parts of your shelter or securing food when cooking out of pine roots. Use a stick to dig them out of the frozen ground and separate them. Split the root in two and pull the ends away from each other. This rope won't burn in your hot fire, unlike synthetic ones. To warm up the cold winter bed in your home, fill a bottle with hot water and place it in your core region under the cover. That's right, not in the toes area. The water will heat your vital fluids traveling through your body, reaching all the extremities and warming you up in no time. Avoid metal bottles so you don't burn yourself. 
And don't forget to crank down the lid so you don't wake up wet. You can also wrap your pajamas around the bottle before putting them on for an extra effect. That bubble wrap you were keeping in your house for months for anti-stress purposes can serve as an excellent insulation material. Spray some water onto your window and push the flat side of the wrap against it. It will now stay up and keep the heat from escaping your room and your electricity bill from growing out of proportion. If you don't have any bubble wrap at home, try asking at the furniture store if they can give you some for free. So a whirlwind of events is happening in the smartphone world right now. Samsung is releasing new phones that are going to be packed with novel AI functions. The company promises that the phones will be able to translate languages during calls, search for things by circling them in a picture, and even help you edit photos with Photoshop-like capabilities. This means two main things to us as consumers. We might be preparing to say goodbye to smartphones whatsoever. On the bright side, and we are, we'll get to experience cool new features and improvements in our phones. In 1994, the Motorola 888 was a hit, but it only gave you 15 minutes of talk time a month. Wow! Then Motorola came out with the Razer V3, thin, sleek, and packed with features like texting and games. Ooh. In 2007, Apple changed the world with their first iPhone. It wasn't just an upgrade, it completely flipped the script on how we see phones. It introduced a touchscreen. Before iPhone, most phones had physical buttons or keyboards. It also gave us App Store, made it easy to access internet wherever you were, and of course, had a great built-in camera. Today, we have an iPhone 15 and live in a world where most everyone has a smartphone. Over 2 billion smartphones have been sold all over the world. Nearly 7 out of 10 people on the planet own a smartphone now. The new generation has been using smartphones since birth, so they won't be impressed much by new functions, and they won't strive to buy all new models. And sure, these new models are faster, snappier, and take amazing photos, but if we take a closer look, they're pretty similar in how they look and work. It feels like we hit the ceiling. This is why smartphones might go out of fashion in the future. Progress keeps moving forward. If companies want to make successful sales, they need something groundbreaking. Now, we don't just look for ways to make our screen sharper or our connection faster. We're looking for big, fundamental changes in how we use technology every day. So we have two options – keep improving current phones or introduce something entirely new to the market. There are a couple of crazy ideas. Some TV shows have shown futuristic transparent phones with holographic displays, but that's more of a sci-fi idea than a real trend. The highest priority is improving battery life. Here, graphene batteries show a lot of promise. They could make your phone last a whole week with just one charge. Graphene consists of a super-thin layer of carbon atoms arranged in a unique pattern, like a honeycomb. This structure gives graphene amazing properties. It conducts electricity and heat really well. It's super flexible and strong, and it's incredibly lightweight. It can be used to make supercharged batteries. They can store and release energy super quickly, which means your gadgets can charge up in a flash. Companies are already working on batteries, but the main problem is to figure out how to make them in large quantities without spending too much money on production. Phone cameras got a great upgrade. Now we have a 100K zoom and can take pictures of the moon with almost telescope-like quality. But there's still a lot of work to be done on front cameras and image processing with AI. 2010s was a selfie era. Seems so long ago. We introduced front cameras to the market, and suddenly, smartphones weren't just for taking photos of the world around us. They were also for capturing ourselves in the moment. Well, the 20s might become the AI image era. A couple of years ago, AI and machine learning made their way into smartphones. Phones started using AI to enhance photo processing, introducing features like portrait mode and improved HDR processing. And companies don't plan to stop here. 
With AI, smartphones can now enhance image quality, recognize scenes and objects, and even stabilize shaky videos in real time. With that, together with the rise of VR and 3D capture, the future of smartphone photography looks incredibly exciting. In general, augmented reality, or AR, and artificial intelligence will become the main characters of our future. Technology is becoming more immersive. Tech companies want to blend digital stuff seamlessly with our real world. To do that, they might, for example, replace our phone screens with something cooler and more interactive. Some envision smart glasses or headsets that make technology invisible by integrating it into our surroundings, like Apple Vision Pro. AI shows a lot of promise and will keep improving. That means smartphones might eventually evolve into digital assistants, seamlessly helping us with tasks like ordering food or booking flights. Regular phones just do basic stuff like calls and texts. But AI power gadgets can do way more. They can handle messages, voice commands, and even tell you stuff like how many calories are in your food and pile on the guilt. AI can already come up with tons of text in no time, thanks to cool tools like OpenAI's ChatGPT. And each new model of GPT gets smarter and smarter. Not just in writing, but in real-world stuff, too. AI is improving. In the future, it'll be able to do everything, from correcting your yoga poses with a webcam to helping lawyers review contracts faster. It may sound scary, but AI experts say that although there are healthy concerns about AI, we shouldn't freak out about it. Researchers are approaching it carefully and realistically. AI is very far from actually becoming conscious or anything like that. Instead, we should embrace its potential and not let fear hold us back. Hmm, sounds a little naive, doesn't it? Phones aren't the only thing that's anticipating huge changes. Humane Inc. is working on gadgets like the AI Pin. It's a tiny device you wear, like a pin, which you can control with your voice and hand movements. It replaces screens by projecting information onto your hand using lasers. It would be like having a subtle personal assistant with you all the time. Of course, not everyone is on board with that idea. It would mean that this device is tracking you at all times, which raises a lot of privacy concerns. The developers tried to solve it by making the device only listen when you want it to and have special sensors to keep your info safe. But it still requires a lot of work. Another promising thing is brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. Now, BCIs are like bridges between our brains and the outside world. They pick up signals from our brains using electrodes, which are tiny sensors, and send those signals to a computer. Then the computer turns those signals into actions. That would help you move a prosthetic hand or even control a smartphone. BCIs are used for two main things. Helping people with medical needs and making everyday life easier. In medical settings, BCIs can assist people who have trouble communicating or moving. For example, people with ALS. In daily life, BCIs can help us focus better while driving, improve learning, or control devices with our thoughts instead of our hands. But making BCIs work perfectly isn't easy. One big challenge is making sure the electrodes that pick up brain signals are safe and long-lasting. Some last for years, but others break down quickly. Another challenge is making BCIs wireless. Right now, they need cables to connect to computers, which can be bulky and risky for infection. Researchers are working on better materials to fix all these problems. And of course, there's a design issue. Wearing a cap with cables sticking out in public would be kind of ridiculous. So we also have to figure out how to make BCIs more discreet. Perhaps we could build them into glasses or earphones. Plus, both the BCI and the user need to learn from each other. The BCI learns to understand the brain's signals, while the user learns how to control the BCI. It's a continuous learning process, so it'll need a lot of fine-tuning. Despite advancements, there's a debate about whether we've reached peak distraction. A lot of young people are showing less and less concentration levels due to all the modern tech. Some people argue that we should focus on less screen time and more human connection. 
Smart goggles or glasses could offer a middle ground. They allow for distraction while integrating technology into daily life. Time will show whether we need to prioritize human connection or technological convenience. I think I vote for human connection. How about you? Perhaps you were walking down the road recently and had to swerve away from a delivery robot. Maybe that robot even apologized for being in your way and wished you a good rest of your day. Or maybe you ordered a package online and had it delivered to you via drone. A good 10 years ago, these things would have seemed unimaginable. But some of us already live these realities, and it seems they're becoming more natural by the second. So, here comes a list of several examples of groundbreaking technology. I bet you'll still have to blink twice to check whether they're real or not. Ah, robots. Now, the robots we used to imagine back in the day looked like R2-D2 from Star Wars, didn't they? But today, we're experiencing a true robotization of everyday life. If you have the means, you can buy a fridge that makes your grocery list for you, and can even look up recipes for your homemade dinner. You can buy virtual reality goggles to use on your treadmill and spend one hour of your day running along a beautiful cliffside in Greece without leaving the comfort of your home. Well, these examples are kind of extreme, but we don't have to go that far. Even our cell phones have their own intelligence now. They can answer your questions about the weather or even call a number for you so you won't have to dial it. If we've already gotten this far with technological advances, what will future robots look like, say, in another 10 or 15 years? A company called UbTech has been developing humanoid robots such as Alpha Mini. The Alpha Mini robot was designed to be a household companion. The robot has impeccable handwriting, can pour you a can of Coke, do your laundry, and even fold your clothes. But it's much more than that. This robot was made to interact with people like it's one of us, smiling, laughing, showing concern. It's flexible, can dance, and even do kung fu. Wow. This could be extremely creepy, but the truth is, these robots are very cute. They were designed to look lovable and easily become part of the family. Soon, robots such as this one may be a common thing in different households. Can you imagine? When Tesla launched its Model S car, which has an automated pilot mode, it seemed that the future had finally arrived. All those years we spent dreaming of the days when cars would drive us, and it was finally here. But not really. Even though self-driving cars are impressive, we still have a long way to go. Intelligent cars are able to recognize and respond to turns, red lights, and the proximity of other vehicles, but they still have a lot of blind spots. In real-life situations, some decisions need to be made quickly and instinctively. And this is something we haven't yet managed to teach our machines. Okay, so self-driving cars aren't as amazing as we thought they would be. But how far are we from having cars flying around in the atmosphere? Maybe not that far away, it seems. Actually, some companies are developing flying car prototypes as I speak. Hmm. Should I talk faster? No? Okay. Those look like a hybrid of a helicopter, a tiny airplane, and you guessed it, a car. And how will these strange flying objects run, you might ask? The flying cars that are currently in development and at testing stages can perform a vertical takeoff much like a helicopter. For now, they're able to travel short distances of about 6 miles. Even so, it's still a car that flies. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm convinced the future is truly near. Few things are worse than waking up every morning and having to look at a tattoo you hate and regret doing. Thankfully, modern laser technologies allow us to easily erase the names of our exes off of our bodies. This might sound extremely cliché, but it's also very true, according to a Paris startup that invested over 3 million euros in developing top-notch shockwave tech focused on tattoo removal. The startup understood that this technology needed an upgrade because, until recently, it could take up to two years to get a tattoo fully removed. This meant that most people abandoned the process halfway through. Now, in two sessions, you can have a tattoo gone for good. Who knows, maybe in a few years, we'll be able to remove tattoos in the blink of an eye. Now, we still need to work on the front end of this tattoo situation. 
the decision to get one in the first place. What would you say if I told you that it's only a matter of time until commercial space travel becomes something more accessible to the world's population? Can you imagine spending your afternoon orbiting Earth? Well, I'm happy to inform you that these days are approaching faster than you can think, my friend. In 2021, billionaire Jeff Bezos took commercial space travel a step further. He took his rocket ship for a spin that lasted about 10 minutes and 10 seconds. But even though it was a brief trip, it marked a significant moment for the future of space tourism. Bezos had a suborbital flight which is likely to become more widely available in the near future. These rockets dash to about 60 miles above Earth, where people on board can experience weightlessness and witness extraordinary views of our planet. The rocket won't get higher than that, though. For a while, orbital flights that can reach the International Space Station will still be ridiculously expensive, something along the lines of 55 million bucks. But hey, it's a step-by-step process, isn't it? I say leaving Earth's atmosphere is already pretty neat. Now, in case you haven't been following this news, smart toilets are becoming even smarter by the minute. Fully electronic toilets are a hype that started in Japan. But they're gradually taking over the rest of the world. Westerners who have tried it say those who haven't are seriously losing the opportunity of revolutionizing their bathroom experience. Today, our technological advances have created toilets that play music and those that use UV light to eliminate bacteria. Some of them come equipped with a touchscreen panel that allows you to control the toilet's features. Of course, such toilets will raise the lid as soon as you approach and then close it themselves after you leave. They auto-flush and heat the seat so that you can sit on a nice, warm cushion. What's next, you might ask? Well. Keep watching this space. Would you eat your veggies if you knew they came out of a printer? I mean, literally? Today, thanks to 3D technology, some people have been experimenting with printing food. For anything to be made using such a printer, it must come from a mushy paste that can be squeezed from the machine's nozzles. The purpose of printing food has mainly to do with its presentation like drawing complex geometrical shapes on top of printed cookies and basically turning your food into a piece of modern art. Printers have shown greater precision for this sort of work than human hands. You might have heard of solar panels before, but probably not like this. Let's just say technology has advanced to the point of turning solar panels into tiny solar film cells. If I may, these solar panels resemble old-school camera films. The difference is that these are highly efficient power generators. Such solar film cells are photovoltaic and can produce solar power at a much lower cost and with higher efficiency than the panels we currently use. Some are saying this is solar energy 3.0. Rather, sooner than later, these film cells will be used not only to charge phones, but also to power entire buildings and even cities. They occupy very little space and absorb sunlight extremely effectively. Inventions such as these sure do make the future look bright, don't they? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.